test. All right, we are going to test it, make sure it's working. Uh, the input looks like the webcam is working. And then if anybody out there wants to give me a thumbs up or tell me in the chat if the audio works. Thank you. Test, test, test one, two, three. Hubbard's doing the check. Is it working? Hi, guys. Okay, so we do have a thumbs up. So that says that maybe it's working. Yeah? Yay, thank you. All right, cool. Hi, Yu-Gi-Oh! How are you? So we are finally able to do a live. We've been super busy. And as you can see, we are back in the living room. Uh, we did a bunch of lives while we were in our new office. Hi, Ryan again. Uh, how is school, right? Because you're the student that we met. And um, that's cool. Right now, it's like 3 o'clock in uh, the Philippines, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And so let me see. I'm going to look at my trusty watch here. And it is midnight in California. So might not have too many people from California on. Yeah. But. So if you guys hear any uh, back like background noise, uh, it's due to construction. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of stuff in the back. And the construction guys are just taking over the entire house. They're done finally again outside. And uh, we had an opportunity to kind of enjoy our kitchen for a little bit. But then they have to go back inside the kitchen again and kind of like refinish the, the painting after they, re uh, not just that, but like the rooms that they were working in, uh, they went back and repainting those areas as well. Um, so yeah, you know what, Yu-Gi-Oh, thank you. One step at a time, we will definitely get there um, as uh, when it's done. But you know what? Uh, as far as construction goes, uh, they're doing really well. But before we go in that, is there anything you want to talk about first? Um, I just want to make sure it's not something. I got a message from the teachers. Is there anything going on? No, it's good. OK, so like all the messages from the school are in Ilocano, I think, and I can't read any of them. So yeah, that's Ilocano pretty funny. <laughs> so she gets, she's on a Facebook thread, but she doesn't understand. I have it. no idea what it says. <laughs> I think Facebook has a translator. No, it doesn't. I, I can't, I don't understand mm -hmm. at all. So welcome to, we have three people here. So welcome. Thank you for hitting the like button. And we wanted to give you guys an update <laughs> on what's been going on with us since we moved here. Actually, we've been giving you updates all day. So if you guys want updates, you want to know what happened on day 50, day 55. What day are we on? We're like in the 60s. Okay, day 60. So day 60, I'll, I'll start with the construction. So day 60, uh, a lot of construction has been happening in the house. We did uh, the whole entire house remodel, installed like seven AC units, um, sealed up the windows. We have like sliding glass windows now. Uh, repainting the majority of the house and then uh, what else we bought a whole bunch of appliances but before we can install the appliances we have to get the construction done um, my son wanted a basketball court on the side of the house but then uh, that turned into another structure on the side of the house <laughs> uh, it's now this finally right where we're at in the construction is with that new structure the second floor, uh, what they call bujos, or the concrete slab, is finally done. Um, and uh, these guys have been very accommodating, very accommodating. So just to give you an update, the last two days, before they, I think Sunday, uh, maybe Monday morning, they, they started doing the pour. And Monday morning, uh, Sunday night, I walked up there into the, where the, the second floor, and it's nice. It's beautiful. They got these crisscross bars all the way through. And I looked around and I'm like, man, this slab looks kind of thin. You know what I mean? Mm. And so Monday morning comes around. They said, I said, how thick is this slab? And they said, four inches. And I said, no, that can't, we can't have that. I need to have the slab at least six inches. So guess what? That morning right there and then they fixed uh, the slab. Like they raised the, the whatever on the outside, like where, so it doesn't overflow they made it into a six inch slab. So I'm happy about that. So that's one. 
number two, as we were up there on the second floor, I was like, all right, so walk me through on how the second floor is going to be because they're pouring the roof, right, of the first floor, which is the floor of the second floor. And I said, if I'm walking up the stairs to the second floor, where is my sec my stairs to the third floor going to be? And the guy's like, where do you want it? <laughs> and I said, okay, well, uh, we I want it over there because we talked about it on Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. I want it over there. I want it to go up. And they're like, okay, sure, no problem. And it was like that, done, right? I mean, now it's no longer a wraparound porch. It's just like, I don't know three-fourth wraparound porch and then one side has like the stairs going up it's still going to be a wraparound porch it's just that on the wraparound porch area you can't go all the way around because the stairs will take you up to the third floor so um i'm really happy with the build i am looking at their their work on the construction uh wh whatever request i have like i said hey we need a post right here guess what like we split they make it happen hey i need the, the stairs to be on this side yep they make it happen hey i need uh you know they, they're even asking like hey what's your plan on the wraparound porch do you want uh what kind of wall do you want around it do you want like a cement wall or do you want like a glass or whatever and, and I we're doing sliding walls sliding okay. No, I'm talking about the wrap, though. Oh, the, the wall oh the what did you decide you're gonna do i don't know i said give me two blocks and then we'll decide the top uh, but I for now it's gonna be two hollow blocks on top of each other after the slab one two right and then I don't know what to put up yet we thought about putting up glass but I haven't found a place that does temper glass so if anybody out there know you, you anybody know, you know anybody who can uh, sell me glass. some tempered glass right it's a lot better so that would see through it's, it's more protection um, it would be great right because mm -hmm. this whatever we put on there has to be very strong because my son's gonna be playing basketball and, all uh, right yeah so let me see what else yeah. oh uh something else too in the kitchen so that's well, done well can we tell them about what happened during the pour go ahead are we okay so because we are in the philippines all okay, right yeah, yeah yeah there was a sacrificial like blood poured onto the concrete do you guys yeah. know anything about that anybody okay. out there heard of that yeah because um I mean, I, I get it, you know, Filipinos, they do a lot of interesting things like they put, uh, so Yu-Gi-Oh knows, right? Well, they put coins in the foundation of the building because, yeah, it was a, it was a rooster, apparently. It was a, it was a male chicken, so a rooster. It was, it was two, two roosters. Was two. So, I, you know, like the construction guys, we banter back and forth. We joke around back and forth, right? Um, and they're like, hey, man. I saw you talking to that girl. Kind of like a man, guy talk, you know, because they're all they're all guys. Like all these guys, there's about five brothers, right? And then there's seven of them all together. There's five brothers. They're all carpenters. One of them that's with them uh, is like, oh, there is their uh, nephew. And then another guy that's with them is uh, somebody who married into the family. So all these guys are all like a, a part of the family. And I'm like, all right. So guy talk, right? We're like, hey, what's this? What's that? Blah, 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 whatever. So we joke around on a daily basis. You know what I mean? Um, like, for example, today, they're like, hey, uh, we need some more, uh, like a plate for the paint. I was like, oh, you want a regular plate? Right? So we're, I'm joking around with them, but I knew what they were talking about. They were talking about the paintbrush and how you can put it on a pan. So you put, you put the paintbrush on a pan and then you rub it up and down against the wall. But I said, oh, okay, you want a plate? So, you know, I was thinking about like food plate. And then we started back in, um, talking back and forth and everything is just funny and hunky-dory. And every day it's like that, right? So one day they're like, hey, uh, where's the goat? And I'm like, goat, what are you talking about? Right, Look, what is this goat? Yeah, well, we need a goat for the, the foundation. It's gonna make the cement stronger. I'm like, what, what is this? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't have any goats, right? And so, so the, the 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 foundations are done, and then we're now on the second floor slab, right? And they're like, hey, where's the goat? And I'm like, what goat are you talking about, right? It does, and they're like, look, man, it doesn't have to be a goat. 
you can get a chicken. One chicken will do. And I'm like, here I am thinking that it's all fun and jokes. It's all fun and games. Ha, ha, ha. You know, there's this guy who thinks he's a Filipino, but he doesn't understand our culture, right? Let's make fun of him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those things if you're in the military, right? You, you know that freaking new private, you're like, hey, go look for some grid squares. Or you send someone to go get a, a, an exhaust <laughs> an exhaust sample right off a vehicle. Or, you know, whatever, right? ID 10 t You know what I'm talking about. If you're military, you know what I'm talking about. I thought it was one of those things. I was like, yeah, ha, ha, that's funny. I'm not stupid. But they keep asking about it, right? They keep asking about it. I'm like, so finally, the night before, like Sunday evening or Monday evening. Before the pour. Right, before the pour. I go to my uncle and I said, hey, uncle, these guys are asking for a goat or a chicken, right? What, what is that about? I was like, oh, yeah, you need it. I got some. I don't and have they it. Uh, yeah, I'm like, and I'm right like, away. and then, and then I'm like, I was like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> like, he's like, well, the, my goats aren't ready, but I have chickens. We can use chickens, and I'm like, yeah. I asked my uncle. I'm like, uncle, is this real? What the hell is this about? <laughs> I thought he was joking around. He's like, no, you need it. It's like a sacrifice or whatever, right? I guess here in Philippines, whenever you're building a new house in the foundation or when they're building the foundation or the concrete slab, you have to like cut a a chicken or a A goat goat open so you can pour the blood where the foundation's going to be. And what they're saying is, my uncle says that like what it's supposed to do is it, it hardens like the concrete you know, like it's it's that much more stronger. I guess uh, in, in translation, how I'm understanding that is that it will make sure that the foundation of the house, you know, whatever spirit comes from the animal will make it a lot stronger. So now you have a guard. I don't really know the explanation. Well, we got two roosters. But I'm dumbfounded. And, I'm like, oh, and so they this were, is real. They were from his uncle's farm. And his uncle, uh, you know, he's a he's a wonderful family member of ours. He comes and visits all the yeah, time. Yeah, he checks on the construction. He's actually a really uh, great person to have um, in your corner. Yeah. You know? And you know, he always comes around and I'm like, hey, uncle, I think we need to cut that tree. And the next day he'll just cut it. Mm-hmm. He'll just cut it. And yeah. then and the thing is like I'm like, hey Uncle Home, I try to pay him, right? And, he's and like, he doesn't no, want to take it. He doesn't want to pay it. He's like, No, this is good. We're good. I'm just here to check on you. I'm just make sure you're Yeah, okay. he's a good I'm uncle. Like, he's like, I'm like a man, good this uncle. is so awesome. You know? Yeah. He brought like a chainsaw. He's like, I'm gonna cut the mango tree. But I was like, No, 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 we want the mango tree. We want, mango. We want the mango tree. Don't cut the mango tree. But I was like, You can cut that tree over there. So he goes over there and did. starts cutting the tree. Um so yeah. I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I am, again, uh, I knew about the coin thing, but I didn't know about the goat or uh-huh. the blood on, yeah. the, on the poor. So I don't know if it's like a one-time thing, I've one-time deal. I've even seen people All put right? a prayer. Yeah. I've even seen people like put a prayer into the foundation. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. So. so I don't know if this is a one-time thing where you do it on the slab or it's like every time you do a slab or every whatever. But they... On the whole second floor, wherever the the, the beams meet, meet and intersect, right where the uh, the beams are, like underneath, they put oh, the blood okay, yeah, all okay. over it. They put it, they put blood all over that thing. I was like, man, a poor chicken dying. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's so. I was like, I was like, I'm glad. It was a beautiful, beautiful rooster. Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> Dee's not here and the kids are not able to see this because I was like, it could be very traumatic. You yeah, know what I mean, because our kids, you know, they're and for D too, you know, she sees like a, a little baby dog, I saw, I, a little I, baby I chicken, love animals. you know, and like for them to get mistreated like that, yeah. where it's like they cut the neck open and they just and yeah. then they just start well, pouring it all over. There the place. is some good to it, right? So the workers ate it for lunch. They did. And there you go. Yeah, so yeah. No, no, no. They ate it for dinner. So oh, it was dinner. They, they whatever they allowed the pour to happen, and then they took the chicken home. And then they made it into something, right? And uh, they're like, hey, uh, yeah, we're going to go get the food and the meal. And we're going to bring it back over here. And then we're going to eat it. <laughs> and I'm like, and they're like, we're going to drink. And I'm like, no drinking. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, hey. Uh, you can eat you it. You can eat it. You can have whatever you want. You know, but like uh, no drinking here at the house. I just I just used D as an excuse. I was like, I don't want to get in trouble. But, 
for me, I'm like, man, I don't, I, I don't like, I'm like, I'm not a big drinker. Um, I'm not a big drinker. And so I'm just like, okay, whatever. Uh, I'm well, not going to do that. I'm not going to partake in it. I've told my uncles too. I'm like, hey, I don't drink. I don't do any of that stuff. I don't partake in it. Yeah. Well, Karyong's here. Hi, Karyong. And hey, she says it's only one time. It's only one time. Yeah. Well, Karyong, thank you for not telling me. It's your fault. You should have told me from the get. And you were like, hey, make sure you got a sacrificial chicken or a sacrificial goat, right, yeah. uh, to put in the pour. I didn't know that. Well, now I know. Now oh, we know. Yes. Now we know. So when we build our house, we're going to have to get a goat or something. Because these guys have been asking for a goat. Mm. And I didn't know. I thought that they were just playing around. I was like, these guys are pulling my leg. Hell no. I'm not going to have that. You guys, you guys see what I got here? If you saw these, hold on, hold on. If you saw these on the side of the road, what would you think they were? Okay. I, I want you to tell me with your really your foreign really? You eyes. You expect me to eat that? You yes, expect me to yes. eat that? You're going to eat that one. So you don't want to give it to me, but you're going to drop it over. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, it's at least gone. I didn't throw it at your head. Yeah, that's, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> so she forced me to stop on the side of the road. Because I wanted to, uh, some avocados with my got, breakfast. Oh my Can you not? What is going on here? <laughs> so she forced me to stop on the side of the road to get little itty bitty mangoes. Now, these mangoes are tasty. They're so good. They're not ripe. They're like young, young mangoes. And when you cut them open, it's like crunchy when you eat it so i'm looking forward to eating it yeah and and i was like oh babe they're selling avocados and he's like not interested and i, I said i said i need avocados for my breakfast can we go there and so we, we stopped there and big disappointment i'm like so disappointed because i thought this california girl was gonna have her avocados turns out they're mangoes i'll yeah. eat the mango i'll eat the mango so let me just go back to the chat real quick so uh Yu-Gi-Oh says wow uh you'll get a rooftop okay yeah and says was it a chicken yeah we got a chicken uh so Yu-Gi-Oh says ha 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 but i hope the rooster is not stolen i don't know my uncle just showed I, up with two of them no his We're uncle good. had tons of uh of animals yeah he's, on he's, his farm. he lives in a farm he lives in a farm he's, he's got a huge well-appointed farm yeah uh let me see like if we wanted to we could have we could have uh done a goat but it would have been a baby goat and would have been, been a baby goat sad. that would have been really sad so yeah now uh thank you karyung for clarifying it's only a one-time thing and then for definitely when we build our house uh next to your house karyung um, well, we'll use the we'll, goat we'll use the goat okay we'll yeah. use the goat we'll seem to say uh, yeah we'll use the goat uh <laughs> let me see sweet mangoes that's i'm true. gonna have to try these mangoes uh yeah Money printer. Money printer, welcome. Like, welcome we to the We have been chat. so busy. Do you see where we are? Yeah. Look at our living room. It's, uh, a, mess. Is, it's a mess. <laughs> hey, so one more thing. So can you guys clarify of when this whole thing about sacrificing a chicken or a goat or an animal to pour blood in the foundation of your build, your, build, your home build or whatever. I think that whatever, comes from biblical times. Right? So I wonder when that has happened, right? And how does that play um into current um culture here in philippines because they're still continuing the trend and we are now a part of it i just want to have a little bit more of understanding what i'm told is that it's passed down from the older ladies and the older <laughs> ladies right All and and how ladies. and how they talk about it right is like it's just the ladies talking about it. It's not the men talking about it. It's passed down from the ladies from generation to generation to generation. So even here in Philippines, they talk about like, you know. There's all kinds of stuff, okay? There's a brujeria. There's all kinds of stuff. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. Yes. They, they sell some, some things at the market. And I'm just like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that was nice. Okay, so Yugi says, I think it's the way back when the Spanish era of Philippines. Ah, mm -hmm. so the Spanish, the Spanish came and basically brought that here. But yeah. is that, did they do that in Mexico when you were there? They do things like that in Mexico. They do things like that all over the world. I mean, if you look back to like biblical times when they were sacrificing, you know, goats and lambs. Like, wasn't lamb. there one point when like one guy was sacrificing his son? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it, is that how it started? Was he building a house? Um, no, 
I think it was Abraham or something. All right, all right. Two, <laughs> two, two religions, <laughs> two religions. Get out of here. Okay, all right, guys. So the conquerors, ha, ha, ha. Yu-Gi-Oh, I just want to let you know that Magellan lost, okay? Yeah. Against Lapu-Lapu. Lapu-Lapu. Hey, Magellan was like, had ships, had soldiers, very well trained. They had the steel armor. They had the, the guns. But they still lost to Lapu Lapu, who only had spears, right? So, but enough said. All right, that's in the past. Let's talk about the future. In, the in, legend, the, the legend, legend, Lapu the legend. Lapu. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like Lapu Lapu is definitely a goat. Yeah. You know, this guy right yeah. here, he was like the what, the ruler of Makthana. Anyways, hey, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So let me not get into this. My husband loves uh, it. Yeah, I love, my I love Lapu is Lapu. A yeah. history. Yeah. Plus, yeah. So. So Don't I love it. Started. I love Lapu Lapu. And he but, loves he loves like, you know, anything that had to do with, you know, uh, power. Lapu Lapu is also a fish, right? Yeah, yeah Lapu Lapu is also a fish. fish. It's a national, national fish. fish. It's a red fish with um, with dots on it, and mm. uh, it's in the sea. Yeah. You you can get it here everywhere. You can get it all over the place. I yeah. see it all the time at the market. Uh, okay, so one of the main topics that we're supposed to have today is okay. about donations and fundraising. Um, as uh, requested by just lay people, regular people, and also organizations. <laughs> so we have been running into that a lot since we moved here. Um, but before we go into that, let's make sure that we hit all the things about the construction. So. The electricians came and they did. Oh yeah, the electricians came. Dean job. So so good, right? So good. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you the great things. Well, about, uh, I have a little bit of background in construction. I was um, I did some electrical work for track homes in the United States at one point in my life. Um, and uh, what happens is when you are starting and you build construction, right? It, there's timelines that you have to meet, and if you don't meet those timelines, well, guess what? The carpenters they'll just gloss over the plumber. Right, and the plumber has to go back and redig these holes when the concrete is already poured, or you know what I mean. Um, they get mad at the electrician for making so many holes in the wrong places um, for for their wires when it's supposed to be a plumbing right there. Or it's supposed to be like a, a sturdy wall that it's a weight bearing wall. So here it's happening here in Philippines. But the electricians came, and my request was. Um, this germania uh company it's an italian we bought an italian yeah. stove we right? bought an import an import um somebody got a wild hair up there, i but... got wild hair <laughs> all right and so she's like i want this and i want the hood and i want this okay all right sounds good i it's agree imported i italian. agree we should have electrical electrical stove and things like that but um when the guy came right i ran the wires already but he was needy he was very needy he was like, okay, well, that's a 10 gauge. I need an eight gauge uh, wire for the range. Or so for he the wouldn't stove. install. So this was install guy yeah. from the company. He wouldn't company. install it. He wouldn't install it. And they wouldn't. In, they didn't do anything. He just came over he here came and over. and he like made my my bathroom no made my kitchen smell horrible. <laughs> and so um, so yeah. and then the thing is, I was like, when we were chatting, texting back and forth, I was like, hey, make sure you bring the vent. Mm -hmm. So I want the, the vent because uh, you can have it two ways. One, to circulate inside the house or number two, vent outside of the house. I want it to be vented outside of the house. And he didn't want to do he that. He got thing. here. He didn't have no vent. He didn't have no vent. He didn't have the, 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 right, the right plug. Plugs. He didn't. He couldn't install like the, the plugs or whatever. And so this guy he just gave nothing. me this stuff. He did nothing. He just gave me the plug for it. He he's like he showed me what we're we're supposed to do with the stove and how to install the plug in the male and the stove, right? And but he didn't have the female, how to hook it up on the wall and things like he didn't install anything. But I paid like two thousand five hundred um, in whatever stuff he bought and in the travel that he had to do. And I'm like really really disappointed. So I had to call the electricians back and I'm like, hey guys, can you help me out? The guy came, he wouldn't install this whole thing. Um, unless I had like uh, like a eight gauge wire, and the guy electrician was like, "Dude, this ten gauge can can handle that electricity, but we'll do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're you're paying, and we'll do whatever you want." So they did. They came and changed they it all. They changed it to uh, eight gauge for the fridge, 
and the stove. They also did a new home run, right, which is a new line from from the main line all the way through the house for the second uh, the second story building, the two story building that's we're building in the backyard, mm -hmm. the side of the yard, side of the house. Um, and then the exhaust, the vent, phenomenal. I looked at it, I was like, man. The exhaust. I can't do. That's a, a, good craftsmanship. I can't good even work. do a better job than that. I was no. like, I, I couldn't even imagine, like the this exhaust vent working out this way. I mean, no. it's clean. They did it right. They did the whole concrete. It was. It's perfect. I I can yes. say it's perfect. Now the bad thing about it though is the carpenters are 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 like upset, right? I'm like, hey, can you guys redo the caulking on the roof, right? And the carpenters like, why? We did that already and i'm like uh, uh something happened with the electrician i think they walked all over it on the roof and now there's yeah. cracks there's cracks yeah and so he's like oh man those electricians they, but yeah. but you know what though they did it they did it um yeah they, no, fixed, no, the they, they, they fixed the carpenters yeah. fixed the issues no questions asked they're just like yeah, okay just fine more, we'll take more care work of it. yeah them. more work for them but they're not you know adding anything else to to the to the cost so we do have five people in here. You guys are welcome to hit that like button. Oh yeah. Um, and so that's what's been going on at our house. Wait, what We're else? gonna that's get it. some cabinets put in. Oh wait, hold on a second. Yeah, hanging cabinets. Okay. Well, my husband brought in the furniture guys, and they're gonna put in cabinets. Um, they're working on the design. It, it, how much is that gonna cost? Well, like, are we gonna say? The hanging cabinets are 800 piso a foot. A foot. So okay. 800 piso a foot. All right. So, so that's our base price. It's going to equal to the pay, right? There's two ways you can do it. They can You can do it in one plywood, or the second one is hardwood. The plywood is like, you know, Cheap. 500 piso or 100 to 500 piso a foot. But the real wood, um, is 800 piso. When I asked him, I said, look, I don't want any termites, right? I am really concerned that if I put wood here, he's like, no, nope, we're, we're going to treat the wood so that way you wouldn't have any termites at all. I was like, perfect. So the cost for the hanging cabinets in the kitchen is going to be around uh, $1,000, $1,000, 1000 USD, which is um, 20, 19, no, I don't know, 75, 75 to 90 uh, foot, oh, okay, uh, yeah. square foot footage, and so however it is, it it ended up to be fifty six eight, fifty six eight hundred. Yeah. So fifty six thousand eight hundred. I think it was a little 1800. bit more, but we talked him down a little. Yeah. Yeah. So here in Philippines, you gotta haggle. You gotta be like, hey man, you can do better. Blah blah blah. Yeah, better for price. Better price. And um, they did. And they did. He did. So I said, all right, man. So when are you gonna install it? He's like, in a month. I was like, what? I know. In a month? What are you talking about, man? One month. But he's like, look, you have to understand. Like, you have to give me some money now so I can buy the wood. Once I buy the wood, I got to make sure it's all straight. It's all good to go. And then you give me the remaining when I, I, I install, I, I install it. it. I okay. said, you're going to install it yourself? He's like, yes. So not just it's not only just custom made. It's mm -hmm. got glass in the front. But the guy is also going to install it. So, um, I think, uh, so Kari Young says, what would Nara or Melena tree? I think he said Melena. It sounded weird. It's, it's one or the other. It's we Nara or Melena. I don't know. So Kari Young, tell me which one's better. And I can go haggle with the guy and be like, no. Okay. <laughs> My sister said the you have to give me Nara. All right. So it's good to go. It's one of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? Okay, so since the, the second floor concrete is done, the guys are back inside the house. They're finishing up both bathrooms and um, they're installing the tile, right? So once the tile is installed on this uh, addition oh, of the house, yeah, right? That addition of bathrooms then along nicely. we can install the uh, washer and dryer. Right. Which is, it's gonna look oh my good. God, I left the water on. I totally forgot. Oh my goodness. Oh, problems in Philippines. So oh, yeah. the uh so the construction guys have been making fun of me like almost on a daily basis they're like yo right and in ilocano or, um or tagalog they're like hey man uh you keep effing up i was like what do i do now he's they're like 
your uh your washing machine you're wasting water all the time i'm like oh man okay hold on a second let me go turn it off so i have to go to the side of the house the backyard and uh i have to go turn off this washer so every time b overflows his washer i get yelled at by the carpenters and they're like dude what the hell man you gotta watch your stuff so i'll take it i'll take the blame for it i don't mind i don't mind taking the blame for my wife but yeah that's happening right now so d had to run to the to the backyard to um turn off the water in the washer because apparently uh she's washing clothes right now um so money printer never stops says do you have uh preserve the water or you can use it a lot and take a long shower preserve the water or you can use it a lot and take a long shower um let me see our water is directly from the city so we get city water um i don't know if it's filtered water but we don't we cook with it we don't drink it um i i buy filtered water from from the market uh you said something about the waters you said something about the waters yeah the water uh eventually for the construction wise we're going to install um a water filtration system for the entire house uh that's not happening right now though um or right now we're just going into into the construction not the aesthetic well it's going to be an addition later on but yes we plan on um doing oh some God. type of water filtration in the house so what happened <laughs> I love, I keep doing this. I keep forgetting that I'm washing clothes. And then the way I have to wash clothes is it's not like in the States. Like you have to turn the water on, it fills up the tank and then you got to turn it off. But I always forget to turn it off. And so like my machine's overflowing, I'm watering all the plants and, and then, um, the workers have caught me like running around, like trying to turn it off emptying out the water like I, <laughs> it's horrible and even though I've done this over and over multiple times um our water bill is like not that high so <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible but at the same time it's, it's fine <laughs> um, okay all right so construction uh hopefully they'll get done with all the tile once the tile is done then maybe this the we'll do the live and uh, we'll show you guys the kitchen when it's done when the fridge is installed and the stove is installed and then we'll also show you guys yeah the, we'll do a big big uh the other kitchen or the other bathroom yeah. right when it's all tiled up but what are your thoughts you saw a little bit of the tile last night it's so pretty i can't wait to shower and now that's great it looks so nice it's gonna be the nicest bathroom we have in the house mm -hmm. yeah yeah so. so um before we tell you about the fundraising and donation part of our lives not asking for fundraising or donations no 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 we have been asked <laughs> so we'll tell you what happened and Go what ahead. we did um but first we wanted to tell you about uh since we moved to the philippines uh we came here to raise our kids and spend more time with them and that is exactly what we've gotten we've gotten way more time with them uh, we've been taking naps in the afternoons because lunchtime, you get your kids back home. We take a little nap, get them back to school. Yeah, we get like an hour and 45 minutes with our kids at lunchtime. Yeah. And it's really nice. Uh, we've been, you know, just reading books to them right before bed. So we've just been doing all the things that we want to do as parents um, and spending more time with our kids and, you know, because like basically our kids are at school all day. And so that's our time to kind of run, run around and do what we need to do. And then when they're home with us, we get to just kind of like only focus on them and nothing else. And that's really, really nice. So um, did you want to say anything about the kids? And I think it's nice. Time? I mean, like every night we read them a book. Uh, so we've been reading them um, books and we're able to kind of elaborate take our time with the books mm -hmm. um and whatever question they have at school you know with the, the words that they're learning or the culture we get to kind of sit there and talk things through and we kind of we have a lot more control here in philippines in like how we can interpret what's being said and let me just tell you coming from the united states all the way here 
to Philippines on the topics that our, our kids would come home with versus in the US versus the topics that they would come home here with in Philippines. Philippines is a lot more innocent. Mm -hmm. There it's like, man, um, they really, the teachers really love the kids. They're passionate about it. They go out of their way to teach them things about life and like also working together as a team. I mean, the whole class, like my son's class and my daughter's class, they all have like a gardening area each, you know, where they actually get to go out there, pull out the grass and the, the teacher gets to talk to them about how to plant, how to be agricultural, how to be kind and nice to to um, the environment. Mm -hmm. You don't get that in Philippines. You know, right. you don't get that in Philippines. Uh, in America. You I mean, you don't get that in the United States. You get that, you get that here in Philippines. Yeah, yeah. And so, and we, we have a conversation with the teachers on a daily basis. And um, so, Yu-Gi-Oh, I, yes, I agree with you, Yu-Gi-Oh, but I'm not going to say it out loud, right? So, Money Printer yeah. never stops. Says, so, if you're in the chat, go read the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh yeah, yeah. said it. <laughs> we're, we're not going to repeat it, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Money Printer Never Stop says, have you loved spending time with your kids so much? I wish I was there. The United States is not where it's at the moment. Asia seems so much better. Does your kids love the school experience? Kids really do like the mm -hmm. school. The kids like school. So Hero was really bummed out when he got to school because he's like, where's recess? Like, when are we having recess? And then the teacher said, no, you're, you need to study. Like, this is what we're here for. We're here to study. And he's like, we're not going to play on the playground, <laughs> but there's no playground. It's like kids have to play with each other. They play badminton. You see them running around. They're very active. The kids are like super active running around, you know, like just really socializing. They're not like there's no electronics whatsoever at school. And if you have an we were reading the, the behavior policy, if you have a Internet addiction, you can get suspended. So yeah, there's no um, there's no electronics at school, and um, so Hero finally his teacher's like, well, if we get all our work done on Friday, we can we can play for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, yeah, and so he was really excited about that. And that she's the one teacher who will let the kids go and and play outside and run around. But they play pogs. I mean, they're playing you know with like those symbol things or those like um what are those things where you like wind it up you throw it and then it like goes around and around in circles it's like a beyblade Bay but it's it's like some kind of uh i think campuso or yeah uh, it's like a wooden piece it's a wooden of something. piece and then they're throwing it on a stick and yeah it's like a beyblade so the kids are running around and they're playing like that you know and and the canteen that they have at school, it serves like a bunch of little snacks and candies, of course, you know, for kids to run up and buy things. But they also serve some good food like arroz caldo and um, shomai, shomai, French fries, um, hamburgers, you know. So it's got some some a lot of different things to choose from mm -hmm. for the children. They like that. They like it a lot. Himiko, she loves her little shomai, and so she'll eat them and. She's great. The same way she was in the States is the same way she is here. She's very organized. She's uh, always into like spending time helping the teacher. And she was like that in the States too. Yeah. So Money Printer says your kids are taught things in Cal um, the California schools wouldn't teach. Yeah, I totally agree. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, they don't, they do not cover like, um, what is it? I don't know what theory they're they're into now in schools. They're not covering that. They don't cover they any don't of those do topics. Like, We're not. Do, no, they don't yeah. talk about. They don't talk about anything. It's just all school. It's all math. It's all science. It's all language. It's all about working together as a team. It's about gardening. Um, it's about uh, being a, be, a decent human being. And if, you know what? None of these kids are obese. They're not. They're fit. I mean, they're, 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 fit. they're there fit. are some kids. Who had a little bit yeah of but Mr. not not at this school not mr at school. donut they yeah. had a little bit too much mr donut not no no not i not have seen a few at the school uh, no not in their school no well, no no no, no. He's i know gonna, i know he's gonna or you're gonna have to point that one out because <laughs> i didn't see it i think that kid was from a different school but hey let's not go there okay. uh carry says wait till they uh they bring home what 
pet child their own from garden their own garden at school. At school. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree yeah. with that. I remember um, I was having like a, a flashback with my cousin. Uh, they live in Tarlac, and like um, you know, growing up, we didn't have we didn't have a lot. And so they were talking about like, hey, whenever we needed vegetables for our food, we went to the school and picked from the garden, you know. Oh. And so it was, it was, it's awesome. It's interesting, right? But, but the thing is, it's like kids here are taught about agriculture and how to how to work with their hands, how to work with with the land. And so you know, um, we go walking at the farm all the time, and there's always people on the side of the road getting some saloyo, yeah. getting some. Yeah. Um, Moringa tree, uh, Moringa. Uh, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Hey, do you think I could come out here and get some?" He's like, "Don't do it." <laughs> yeah, they have papaya. They're out there picking papaya. I was like, "But stuff. I want some of that." And like things here are so fresh. It's right from the farmer, and the farmer usually will go to the market and will sell it. So you know it was picked that day. Yeah, it has to be uh, picked that day, or else it'll wilt. Anyway, it is so. tasty. Well, what did you? So what have you noticed about the vegetables here and the vegetables in the United they States? They last longer. So. Why? I don't know. Maybe because they're they're picked here and they're they're sold here. Because um, I'm thinking, you know, we're buying onions or whatever um, from the grocery store in the United States, and by the time we get it, it's already been sitting there for three to four weeks. You know, because it's gone from the it's gone in big containers, moved around, and then it's finally at the grocery store where i've had the same fruit or vegetable sitting on my counter for for at least two three weeks and it's not showing any kind of like um that it's going bad at all and i'm just surprised and um i open it up and it's beautiful and pristine and i was just like oh my god these are still good i bought them maybe like four weeks ago so we're wondering if you know um it's because the plants here are fresh and they're not, not do, doing they're not having any additives compared right. to in the United States where it has to go from the farm inside a container then from the container into it goes a into freezer. a freezer yeah it goes into then a from freezer. the freezer they thaw it and then it's sold to the to the people yeah right here you get it right as it's being picked and you know mm-hmm. what the vegetables are beautiful. Yeah, they they're are fresh. They're, they're tasty. really tasty. Mm, it is yeah. so good. So we're going to try those um, those mangoes. avocados. Yeah, they're mangoes. Avocados. They're mango. But I want that. I want her to try it with three different things, right? Okay. One is with uh, salt and chili, right? You have to have that. Number two is with bagoong, and then number three is with the baga. Uh, I forgot the last one. It's like shrimp paste, but it's called. Oh, uh, I don't know what it's called. The nasty called. smelling one. Uh, they're both. They're bagong. They and all this smell. One, yes, they all smell. It's so, true. Well, I'll try it. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I want I her really to try them, and so she can be like, mm, mm. Mm. I was telling uh, my sister. I like vinegar. Yeah, I was telling my sister. Alamang. Uh, yeah, there you go, alamang. So I was talking to Valen, my sister-in-law. I was like, hey, guess what? We got some young mangoes. And uh, we're gonna we're eating them with this and that. She's like, oh no, that's not even right. That's not fair. She's like, my mouth is watering thinking about those <laughs> stupid mangoes. So I've never had them. This will be my first time, and well, I'm gonna look forward to it. So and, that's great. but as a young kid, you know, for me growing up, like you just go up to the mango tree and you pick them from the mangoes and you start biting into them. Wow. You know, and it's so tasty. It's so good. So she's gonna try that the mangoes maybe later on today yeah or maybe tomorrow but yeah okay so now right our last topic of the day is going to be donations at the school yeah okay so since we've since we've gotten here you seem like you love your life at the moment the philippine life is a lot slower than america yeah we do we love our you life know money now. printer um yes we definitely love the philippine life at this time but mm-hmm. i'll tell you what um if we didn't do the type of preparation that we did when we were younger, right? If we did not invest in um, in our education, if we didn't join the military, mm. if we didn't invest in our education, if we didn't save money, we wouldn't be where we're at. And I'll tell right, you, right. Um, there are some there are some years in my kids' lives that I miss. Mm-hmm. I would say that because D and I were grinding so much. I was ground grinding so much that I saw my kids probably one two hours in a day. 
right? And I miss those times when they were like little babies crawling around, the, the, the cute moments here and there. And now I wish I can go back, but I can't. Mm -hmm. So um, it's because of that yeah. that we have taken the time and thought out like, look, our kids are only going to be this 7, age. 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for, for a short yeah. period of time. We can grind later on. Mm -hmm. We can work our butt off later on. We can put more money in investments later on, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I'd rather give my time and effort to my kids right now, mm -hmm. right? While they're young, so I mold them to the person that I want them to be. I want to believe in them. I don't want some teacher in the United States telling them how they should be and how, how they should act. I don't want the caregiver in the United States to be telling and teaching them about life when that's my role mm -hmm. in my time, in the time that I choose it. And I think that Philippines has given us that opportunity. I did not think that it was going to be this beautiful, right? Yeah. Um, life here in Philippines is so romantic. Right? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it truly is from walking in the rain, mm -hmm. watching, the, sun, watching the, rain. the sunrise, Mm. watching the sunset mm -hmm. right reading to my kids spending time with you yeah. know my beautiful wife all right mm. um i can't i can't in the united states it's go 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 all right what's the next thing what's what's your next hit time i have to be somewhere at 6 30 i have to be somewhere at 8 okay let's talk let's have dinner uh let's plan out our dinner when do you have time oh i'm meeting with someone at this time i'm meeting with someone at that time okay well we never actually spent our anniversary together. It's always the weekend before or the weekend after, not on our anniversary day. Mm -hmm. We're here. Like, if it's like, for example, today is one of the carpenter's wife's birthday. Guess what? He took it off. And I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. Why? Because they make time for that here in Philippines. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, what else are you saying? Money princess. Well, we were supposed to talk about the donation stuff. Ah, the kids, the kids here, they love like too. The kids here, yeah. they love like. <laughs> okay. Love okay. Um, okay. But how, how do we gauge that? How do how do we gauge our kids um, liking the Philippines? Well, they're coming home with new languages mm -hmm. uh, every day. They're coming home with new friends' names every they're day. They're not crying. They're not about crying stuff. And, and you know what? They're very resilient and they're more mellow. They're very flexible. A lot more mellow here in Philippines than they were in the U.S. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., they bickered, they, ar they argued about what to watch on TV. And now they play more and with now each other. They play like more each with each other. Playmate. They, um, you know, watch the same shows. You know, they're more sharing. My daughter is more caring towards her little brother. And mm -hmm. my, my son, you know, he's a clown. Um, but he's nice. He's kind to her. He would bring her things, bring her food, bring her Yeah, slippers. he's always been so good to he's, us. He's, so. he's good. So I think that our kids not just for us me and her but from my perspective how our kids are doing in school yeah and how they are taken in the culture it's it's wonderful yeah it's wonderful all right so we're gonna talk about a tough topic um we're gonna dance around some things <laughs> just to put it out there <laughs> dance around some things. all right so um since we've been here in the philippines we have been approached many times uh for donations or to borrow funds um some people you know offering to work for it um and then uh you know just we we're just still waiting for the work to be done <laughs> in some cases um in other cases it's like all right that's cool but um so the one that has just recently been kind of like a big topic of discussion is um, the school wanted to nominate my son and our daughter, both of them, <clears throat> for this like fundraising uh, competition. It's like a money fundraising competition. And so like, I think this kind of thing is not legal in the United States. Um, but here, uh, it seems like it's a thing that's been going on for years and years and years. The person who raises the most money from each class 
becomes like the prince or princess, right? Um, see, I think that um, those kinds of things don't align with our belief and value system. Um, we're not that kind of couple where we want our kids to be princes and princesses. Like that's not, it's not, it's not something that uh, is enticing. Um, as a matter of fact, it's something that really like, I'm like, Ugh, whoever raises the most money, well, we ain't doing that. Um, so anyways, I had a big issue with it. My husband definitely didn't agree with it either. Um, we both had our different ways of expressing how we felt about it. Um, but when it came down to it, it was like the teachers were really like excited and they're like, your son and your daughter is going to be the one to represent. And I was like, no, we're not. So we are okay with like, you know, being a part of um, like supporting the, the projects. We like, definitely we want to help with supporting it, but we are not going to participate in, in that kind of, um, activity. It's not, yeah. it's not us. Yeah. We, uh, strategically, the kids are going in, um, in the school that they're going in right now because we want them to experience the culture and we don't want them to be treated differently. Right. Um, and I think that this money contest would have, um, one had them treated differently and looked at differently because of the money that's raised. And so we this decided to decline and the school, um, you know, agreed with our request, but we're still, we're still going to donate to the cause, mm -hmm. you know, because the school definitely needs some improvements. There are some things that they, that the, that the school principal wants to do as a project and we can put money and donate towards that. Yeah. It's just that we're we not going to be the we face don't, of it. Yeah, yeah we don't no. want to be the face of it. And we definitely don't want our kids to be in the middle of raising funds, right? Or to be the face of raising funds. And it's a competition between, you know, my son's class and the other classes for the boys. And it's like, it's not a good thing um, when money is involved. You know, I think yeah. that um, we were very clear. And we told them, we're like, hey, we can help donate. We'll, we can assist uh, wherever possible. But we don't want our kids to be the face of that. Um, we, you know, we provide funds, um, but we just don't want our kids to be a part of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's just really hard. You know, you're here in the Philippines and, you know, people, people will ask you for money. And I mean, it's like, uh, we know they're asking us for money. It's hard to be like, Oh, sorry, you can't help you. Um, it actually is like a big burden on us when people ask us because we're not working. Um, all we have is a fixed income. And so it's like, but at the same time, like people are looking at us, they see us with a car and they're like, Oh, well, you know, you can drive a car. So can you give me a few hundred dollars? And it's just like, no, not really we have children and a family and a household. Um, and so no, that's not, that's not something we can really do, you know? Um, but, but it doesn't stop people from asking because if you don't ask, you don't know. Right. Yeah, that's um, true. That's kind of like how people. So Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh says if money is already involved, go the other way. And you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, we had a, a large, like a general uh, parent teacher association meeting. And once money was involved, people, people got, up, got and up, left. up and left. They're like, mm, they're like, I'm, I'm not, not a part of this. Be involved in this whole yeah. process. Yeah, I would say like half the people left. Yeah, they left. And then you know, and then they're there, you know, wanting you to to pledge in front of everyone. And it was just like, I was just like, whoa, yeah. this is this is too much for me. Like, I can't. No, thank you. I, I'll talk to people in private. This is a very open forum mm -hmm. with a lot of stress involved. Yeah. Uh, but it, ultimately, it was great. It was good. 
it was great to experience that. Um, I'll tell you, when I was younger, my sister, my older sister, Hazel, was, you know, the princess. And um, I got to see, because it's not just, it, the, the cost is not just raising money for the funds. The cost is also, like, you got to buy the crown, you got to buy the plaques or the trophy, you got to get the car, you know, you got to get the makeup, you got to get the dress, not only like your kids dress or suits, but you know, they have like their entourage with them too. It's like, it's a, like status a whole, thing. yeah, it's, a status. Yeah. it's like the whole, it's like almost the whole wedding, right? Mm -hmm. And here in Philippines, I like to go big and we are trying to be as discreet as possible in the community that we're in. Like we will help, but we want to be as discreet as possible. And we don't want our kids to be a part of that. Um, mm -hmm. So, but you know what though? Um, the staff at the school uh, that we were talking to listened, and they were very accommodating. And they said, you know what? We totally understand, and we respect your decision. Yeah. And I think that that was that it was good for us to experience that. And the thing is, at this point, we don't know what to expect. Um, but uh, I think that we managed it very well, right? Yeah, that was that was not something easy to experience. You know, uh, one, you feel like you're letting people down, um, and at the at the same time, it's like a lot of a lot of pressure. And yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Not anything. And I think I think it's designed to be that way. It's designed to be in an open forum, so they put pressure on one person, mm. and then that one person caves. But I'm not one person. Uh, there's two of us, and we don't we don't cave in really easily to mm -hmm. public demands. I think I'm at a point in my life and I'm not, an, I don't want to speak for you. I'm, a, I'm at a point in my life where I know what I like. I know what I don't like. And I, I know my values. I know my character. I know my morals and I will stand up for those things, right. That I believe in. If I don't believe in it, I'm not gonna, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and just go along with it. No, I've, I've gone through a lot of things in my life where it's like, okay, no, I will stand my ground or I'll just back off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, what are you, what are your thoughts yeah. in that matter? Yeah. Like I, I definitely had a, um, a long talk with my husband prior to, and I was just like, this is how I feel. This is, this is where I, I stand on this. And, you know, like, um, we communicate in different ways, but I think at the same time, at the end of the day, we come together and we, we can agree about our values and our belief system yeah. and what we want to do with our children. How long have we been married? <laughs> over 20 years. So we've been so. married for over 20 years, been together for about 22, 23 mm -hmm. years now. And um, we got married at a, a very young age, right? Uh, and we've seen this before. And this is not our first rodeo. You know what I mean? It's like we've had our trials and, and tribulations the first two, three, four, five years, mm -hmm. all right, of the marriage, seven years into the marriage. And it's like, at this point, it's like, there's no more arguments. It's like, hey, I'm going to be here tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to see my <laughs> face again. Yeah. And uh, you're going to be upset all you want, or you can eat this food that I made. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and let's work through it. And let's so. work through it. All right. And I think that, um, when marriage is like that, it's much more beautiful. There is no argument. It's like, okay, look, I'll be here. I'm here. You're here. What's your commitment? Okay, sounds good. Now, are you going to give me some more of that food or not? And then that's the Yeah, we just kind of like try to be on the same page with things, you know, especially when things are coming at us that are new. This is a new experience. A lot of this is new stuff we never even anticipated coming, you know, at our door step. Yeah. And so it's like, it's all a learning process. And, and, you know, I think that on the emotional side, I'm kind of like, I'm on the logic side and my wife is on the emotional side. And I always remind her that it's like, as long as I'm alive, you're alive. Our kids are, are safe and we're all together. We'll be fine. We'll mm -hmm. be okay. And we can, we can resolve any problems. We can, you know, traverse any issues, right? Uh, as long as, as we're safe together. And yeah. so um, tip for you guys for married couples, right? <laughs> happy wife, happy life.
Okay. Happy wife, happy life. Right. Yeah, we are getting to the end of our one hour. So ah. we're so happy you guys joined us. Hit the like button before you leave. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next yeah, one. Yeah, so thank you, Yu-Gi-Oh. Thank you, Kari Yung. Uh, thank you, uh, Money Printer. Yes, I saw never somebody stop. else in here and today then, uh, that I've never it. seen before. No, we have. I think uh, we went to their school once. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ryuken. Uh, Ryuken, thank you so much for joining us today and joining us in the chat and um talking to us about the sacrificial chicken or rooster <laughs> or goat you know what i mean and, and yes. like kind of like listening to us just ramble about our day and you know <laughs> what for those of you guys who are seeing this for the first time not on live and if you are interested in any of in any topics at all that you want us to cover please let us know so that way we can cover those things there's so much to do here in philippines mm -hmm. and you know coming from a foreigner i don't want to speak for you but coming from someone who was born here and raised uh in my team and uh, my before pre-teens before teens um you know philippines has a lot to offer and the culture is so yeah. rich and so um it's kind of like you got to be here kind of thing right? yeah but yeah. Uh, before you you come here you want us to research a few things let us know. We'll definitely do that for you. All so, right. Carpe diem. Seize the day.